Okie dokie, let's put on the scene. There we go. Ah. <laughs> well, here we are, Tuesday morning. So wherever you are, I um, hope you're tuning in to Leaders Live. Um, just waiting for the live feed to come up. I know we're live right now. Uh, YouTube saying we're live, brilliant. Oh, and here we are, lovely. Just set that up now, there we go, okay. Oh, we've got Ian Price listening. Morning, Ian, how are you doing? <laughs> this is going to be absolutely brilliant, says Ian. <laughs> <That's one. laughs> thanks, Ian, thanks for the support. That's marvellous. Uh, so uh, this is, um, as you can see by the ticker tape that's going underneath, this is um, music, a minor blues music by artist Peter Jenkins, actually my uncle, um, who wrote this song. And I've claimed it as as my entree music, <laughs> which he doesn't mind at all. So uh, yeah, there we are. So we've got David Bramwell in the room today. Really looking forward to that. Can't wait to, uh, to speak to David. We're talking about storytelling today. And uh, here we go. So we're just about to go into the rooms. Just turn the music off. Ah, so there we are. Uh, well, hi everybody. It's a Tuesday morning here in the UK and it's just after 8.45 and we're coming alive. 8.45, coming alive. And we're, <laughs> I love that bit. Um, we're actually live, um, fingers crossed anyway, out on LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. So um, it's just amazing, this technology. And we've got quite a few people joining. So hi, if you're just joining, brilliant to see you. Um, so yeah, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Uh, welcome to this Leaders Live Breakfast Show. And this morning I'm joined by by my good friend, Colonel David Bramwell. Hi, David. How are you doing? Hi. Hi, Andrew, and hi, everyone. Great to yeah. be here. Brilliant to have you. I'm going to come back to you just in a tick. I'm just going to do a little teaser for us all today. Um, so, listen, you know, we're here to explore, you know, why are stories so important? And can they really help us to access our superpowers, folks? And what happens to our brains, you know, when we listen to a story and how do they work? And actually, we've got Dr. Ian Price uh, listening as well. And he's an expert in neuroscience and stuff. And he would probably tell us all about how the brain works. So uh, um, it's nice to have Ian listening. And, you know, um, why not just save time and cut to the chase and state the meaning of the story? Surely facts and data are far more incisive when it comes to making decisions. Right? So we've got all of this and a lot more in our interview chat this morning. This is a back and forth chat. Um, if you don't know me, uh, I'm Andrew Jenkins. As always, you know, please, uh, I encourage you to interact uh, with us today. Ask loads of questions. Put comments in the comments field. Thanks, Lloyd. Um, good to see David uh, to begin with the story. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, you'll be doing that in a moment, Lloyd. No problem at all. Um, smash those likes too, please. I'd really appreciate that. It just really helps the channel. And please, please, please let us know if our audio is coming through okay too. So... Uh, we've got, um, hi David, uh, great to have you on Leaders Live Breakfast Show, as I've said, so excited to have you here. Let's just give you a quick round of applause while you're there. Hey! I just had to get that crowd from outside, so uh, <laughs> there you go. I hope they're socially distancing. <laughs> Still socially distancing, masks on and all that kind of stuff, yeah, indeed. So, you know, we're talking about today why storytelling is so important in business, and I'm just going to introduce you, David, just for a moment. Um <clears throat> So, uh, David, Colonel Commander, Chief in Staff in the British Army, um, or, or was, and now does strategic large-scale consulting projects like setting up police forces you know, in the Middle Eastern regions. You know, he's also an, uh, a non-executive director, he's a board member, and he's a highly intuitive coach. And you know what, David, they say, don't they, don't they say that a picture paints a thousand words? And I'd be interested to know from you, David, do stories paint pictures in our minds david take it away for us illustrate this for us well on the pun i mean great great to be here great to be here andrew Brilliant. and um i kind of want to kick off with a story oh about, a story uh, about sunil gupta's mother that one um, and sunil gupta that's the one sunil Lovely. gupta um is a an, an entrepreneur um uh and a speaker and writer right um, and I heard him tell this story on a Simon Sinek podcast. Okay. Um, and it's a story about his mum. Right. And his mum um, in India um, uh, as a young girl in um, a refugee camp taught mm -hmm. herself to read and uh, to read English. And she yeah. did this by reading a biography of Henry Ford. Wow. 
uh, she came home to her mum and dad, having, you know, over a period of time taught herself this stuff, and said, I am going to become an engineer and work in the Ford Motor Company. Mm. And her parents thought it was amazing. And uh, over time, they, they emigrated to America. She got a, a scholarship to college, studied engineering, and went to the Ford Motor Company for a job. And in the interview, the, the guy, and this would have been in the 60s, the guy interviewing her said, uh, you know, are you here for an engineer's job? And she said, yes. Mm -hmm. And he said, we have no women engineers. That's just, it's just not going to happen. Um, and of course, her dreams destroyed. She got up and went to leave the room. And when she got to the door, she turned back and she told him that story. Um, and, and he said, come back in, sit down, wait here, left the room. And over a period of weeks, kind of fought tooth and nail against all of the... Um, you know, the, the culture and experience of that company. And she became the first female engineer in the Ford Motor Company. Wow. And why I tell that story is what she could have done is said, well, you should employ me because I'm a brilliant engineer. Here's my certificates and my results from college. <laughs> Here's the facts. And, and I'm great at overcoming um, adversity and yeah. so on. And it is, that is all true. And that is ah. in one dimension what that story is about. But, but, but why I tell it is the thing that changed his mind wasn't the facts, which he already knew, it was mm. the story. And that that fired things in his brain and chimed with um, uh, values of his. And um, that's what changed it. Was the, it was the power of the story, not the power of the facts. The story is yeah. a true story. It's story, yeah. um, and that's, that's why I tell that. So stories make a difference. Beautiful story, actually. Lovely story. And isn't it interesting? Yeah, I just had um, just a few comments are coming in here. Uh, this is from Chris Jones, uh, one of my friends. Uh, brilliant story. Absolutely. Yeah, completely agree. Um, you know, there's also the power of intention there as well, David, isn't there? You know, she intended that from a very early age. Yeah. That influenced her parents to emigrate uh, to America, which again is against all the odds. That's a story of against all the odds, and and then you know the the story proceeds. Isn't it interesting? So yeah. much going on and, in that and story. And I know we'll, we'll get into it later, but yeah. you know, one person sees one meaning in a story, and someone else sees something different. Uh, so in a way, in that kind of yeah. diverse, you know, we want a diverse workforce and the power of diversity and seeing things differently. Mm. That if you just present some numbers. It's difficult to see them differently, but when you <laughs> tell a story, people do see it differently, and you get to different layers and different dimensions, and yeah, they're really powerful. They're really powerful, yeah. And you know, I mentioned this one in the, the teaser, David. You know, what happens to our, you know, inside our heads when we listen to stories? How do they actually work? What's going um, on? Let's start to unpick it. Well, to me, I mean, there's mm. something about about culture. So, organisational culture, we, you know, we know it's really important. You know, yeah. Drucker, culture eats strategy for breakfast. <laughs> um, uh, and yeah, and at, like a, at a, a, one way of describing culture is mm. it is the stories we tell ourselves about ourselves. Um, and if you take that to an individual level, we don't call it culture, we, but we call it, you know, personal values and conditioning um, or whatever, you know, things like that. Yeah. Uh, but it's just as true. We tell stories to ourselves about ourselves mm. um, and um, to me there's a there's a bit bit of a sort of myth of of the um, uber rational decision making data driven um, and, and I, I really don't buy it I, I, I think all of our decisions are made by a bit of our brain which actually is working on um, on emotion and uh, rather than rationally. Mm -hmm. um, so even when you're making a data-driven decision, you're making a decision based on how you f your brain is actually deciding on how it feels about the data. Um, uh, yeah. How you present that data to your brain influences that. You know, the colors you use on the, on the PowerPoint chart, where you put the order you put the bits of data, um, you know, all of that influences in, um, uh, in, in kind of irrational ways. Um, and so the power, what's going on for me in, in, in stories is it's is it accessing the emotional part of our brain with a really powerful bit yeah. that is really in charge. Um, uh, and that's what stories, stories can do.
that's okay that's what stories can do and it, it's it, i suppose it's um i'm just trying to find move, move slides just for a moment it, it's interesting you know when we look back in history of mankind we are built to connect right you know 100,000 years ago we were telling stories around the fire side you know um 27,000 years ago man started to make cave paintings to preserve knowledge 3,000 years ago text was kind of created hieroglyphics and things like that and only you know um 28 years ago did we create powerpoint <laughs> you, know, so, it, you know so really we're built for that kind of connection aren't we i guess dave is what i'm trying to say there but you know what say even you even with um yeah. you know even with powerpoint it's the um you're still trying to tell a story sure. um, you know even if you're presenting lots really really data rich mm. information and and thinking about that story, um, and the best, uh, uh, a guy I worked for, um, uh, um, having left the army, he was really brilliant at this. He was absolutely all about the data, but he knew how to use it to tell a story. And he would plan the presentation to the board or the monthly performance review, or whatever it was. He would, he would call it storyboarding. And storyboarding. You know, what is the story we're trying to tell here? Um, uh, and, and then how are we going to use the data um, to support that, um, uh, to support that story, uh, um, yeah. and and it, you know even even you know the data, it's the story that matters, not the number. Right, I'm going to challenge you here, David. So come on, you know, don't stories just get in the way here? Because surely facts and data, you know, they're far more incisive when it comes to decision makings, right? Um, well, I mean, I totally <laughs> don't buy that. Um, but there, but but you're right. There is a point. Um, uh, so. Um, uh, you know, if you if you if you want to know um, what time the next train to um, Basingstoke goes, um, and um, I give you an anecdote about one time I was late in Waterloo, and it might be really funny and important, and it might illustrate the point that you should already know. When you're six, um, but you'll miss your train. Yeah, so, it's going to get in the um, way, right? You know, it's the four thirty yeah. six from platform eight. You want me? Absolutely. Um, yeah. And so, you know, I know, I love telling stories. I, I think I'm good at it. Um, I would say it's a strength of mine. And like all strengths, yeah. you can overplay them. Right. And okay. um, so you've got to think, what is, is this a time for a story? Or is this just a time to say, it's the 846 from Platform 8? Right. Um, and, uh, and, and not let them, and not let them get in the, uh, um, you know, kind of, kind of get in the way. But, but when you, you know, when you go, if you're just going to use the data, you're just going to use the fact. I don't like that word, but I can't yeah. think of a better one. Um, <laughs> the information. The, this isn't just comes about what you see. Yeah. Um, uh, and, and so I've told stories to people, which I have thought as a story about, about X. Um, and other people have seen Y in it, which is really important and valuable as well. I thought, wow, I've never seen it. Um, and so you get a richer decision because you allow people to access it in different from different dimensions in different directions yeah and i guess from a brain perspective you know it's integrating so much more than just intellect isn't it you know so intellect would feed off the data and the the information and the facts as you said and i think what you're saying there is that actually if we include an element of iq and eq and we integrate these and we play with both of these and probably a little bit of sort of social um, social and spiritual quotient as well, then maybe we end up with better decisions, David. What say you? Um, well, I think we definitely end up mm. with, with better decisions. I mean, I, I, yeah, I spent a long time, a lot of my time in the army. Mm. And um, one thing that armies are good at, and, and really how that is, why, why, you know, I mean, my colleagues in the army are overwhelmingly white, middle-aged men right um uh who have very similar social backgrounds have all been through the same training mm. um, and probably all think of it the same um now that probably meant that the decisions we made were not the absolute best they could have been because we saw things the same so uh, there's no one challenging and saying ah oh, but what if um but it did mean we were able to make decisions really quickly um, uh, and and in that context, speed is really, really valuable. And I could tell all sorts of stories that illustrate the power of being able to do something that's good enough quickly over yeah. something that's perfect slowly. Right. Um, and um, 
so I, th I do believe that by, you know, by integrating all of those things, EQ, IQ, social and, and, um, uh, and spiritual and stuff, by integrating all of that, you do get better decisions, but it can take longer and it, and it perhaps yeah. brings conflict because people see things differently and you've got to work through that and you've got to be ready for those things. Um, uh, but they, but it, absolutely, you will get better decisions. Yeah. Um, so you have to uh, work and, and through you will, this. And yeah. you will inspire people mm. who will then add their own value. They will, they will see the, uh, that they, they'll be, well, inspired. Their imagination will be engaged by the story you've told. And even in that military context, you know, part of giving the orders and briefing people on the mission, and there's a whole load of data to get across, you know, times and grid references and passwords and so on. But you've also got to inspire people and get them um, excited and engaged and confident and committed to adding their value to the plan so that when it as inevitably will starts to go wrong, <laughs> other people are able to, to solve that problem and keep, yeah. it, keep the goal in mind. And then there's a couple of things there I just just thought about when you were talking about that one one is that you talked about the motivation and the inspiration you know when you're facing an enemy on on a on a you know a thin red a, a, a thin red line for example you know and you've got an enemy charging at you you know you've got to be quite inspired to want to be able to fight at that yeah. point so having that story in your head i guess would have been important yeah. to in, you know to help motivate people in very very tricky situations life or death situations to, to do their very best for them for themselves and their country and their their comrades right yeah i mm. mean there's a brilliant story in mm. from the um uh, from the Falklands. well it's not one i've told you before andrew but um one of the night attacks on uh, on uh, mountain battles in in the falklands war um, uh, and this was what is called, it's a, it's a bit counterintuitive, what are called a silent night attack. A silent um, night attack, and, right. um, yeah. And what that means is that you sneak as close as you can get uh, <laughs> uh, until you are discovered, and then it goes goes noisy. Goes noisy, right. And okay. this, one of the, um, I can't remember which battalion it was, but one of the parachute regiment battalions had yeah. got to their forming up point, and they're all lying there, and they you know, I mean, literally, they fix bayonets. This Oof. is um, pretty, pretty gruesome stuff about to happen. Mm -hmm. And these are fit, determined, um, you know, astonishing uh, young men. Wow. Getting ready to do what they, uh, what they have dreamt of doing and unleashing violence on the Queen's enemies. Mm -hmm. And it's time now to stand up and start walking towards the enemy and see how close we can get. Um, and um, uh, the story is told by one of the platoon commanders. So there'll a, a, be a young guy in his 20s um, in charge of a platoon of 30 soldiers. Yeah. And he stands up and he takes a couple of steps forward and he looked behind him left and right and all of his soldiers were still lying on the ground. And, and he looked further and in the mist on his left-hand side, he could see the other platoon commander on the, and to the right, the, the third of the three platoon commanders. And everyone else was still lying down. And, and, and at the same moment, all three of them turned back and whispered, you know, get up. <laughs> um, and, and that, you know, that story, I find a really, you know, when, when, you've, when you're about to do something difficult and you yeah. need to bring a team with you, you know, you've got to be prepared to do the difficult stuff. You've got to be the leader. Oh. Okay, so he had to stand up first, right? You know, stand up for it. Come on, let's yeah. see we're going to do this. Um, which is about and, inspiring and motivating do as not do as i say but do as i'm doing right do as i do yeah. and that and to me you know mm. that that um I, you know i've had i've had similar experiences not quite as sort of visceral as that one but but to me the story is really important i think you know what i can you know i've got to do this this is yeah. if i'm going to lead these people through this difficult you know and in business and if you're going to lead people through a redundancy program or um, uh, or uh, a closure of a final salary pension scheme. And I've done all those things. And mm. you know, you've got to step up and say, I, you know, oh, I don't want to be the guy to tell these people this. But you know what? They deserve it. They're worth it. I've, it's me. It's on me. And tapping into that story and the, you know, hackles up at the back of the neck feeling, that, yeah, mm. well, like, okay, I've got to, you know, I've got to do it. I'm not trying to, well, I am drawing a parallel between um uh those two situations one's n one's absolutely not life and death 
but it affects people's livelihood and hopes and dreams and so on. It's important. Yeah, I agree. And and you know, you talked earlier also about <clears throat> the you know making quick decisions. Sometimes you need to make quick decisions, but other times you need to slow it down, take a little bit longer, and that's when stories become so powerful. And and interesting, isn't it? You know, when you start to get you take your time over something, and there's a bit of conflict, there's a bit of back and forth, and different stories are being told. Quite often, you come to an even better decision than anyone had really ever thought about in that room, right? Yeah. You know, okay. because one and one doesn't equal two anymore. You know, one and one equals something brand new appears in yeah. the room through the taking the time of you know what do we do with this? You know, what what do people think? You know, what kind of solutions are there? What sort of stories are there in the room? And that helps to make an even more even more better a decision, as it yeah. were, David. Yeah. Well, you know, here's the thing. I mm. mean, one um, uh, with a, a team having I uh, built a new team in a, in a job I had having left the army. Yeah. And we had a tricky problem to solve, a series of them. So we got I got the team off site so we can be creative and not yeah. distracted by phones and so on. Um, uh, and um, uh, we've started uh, getting into the you know the first of these. And I had a phone call from my boss and I had to take it. So I left the room um, and spoke to my boss but, and, and we took about probably about 10 minutes. And, and while that was going on, my brain is whirring away. Yeah. Uh, and, and of course, um, I'm, I'm not paying attention to my boss. Um, <laughs> uh, and, and as I'm coming back into the room, I, it is clear to me what the right thing to do is. Yeah. So I walk back in and I clap my hands and rub them together, which is the thing I do. Pay attention, and, uh, right. Uh, yeah. And said, so, right, I've cracked it. This is what we're going to do. Um, and and I, do you know what? I was absolutely full of myself. <laughs> um, David, this is what people need from their lead, from their lead. A yeah. clear plan and, yeah. you know, excitement and enthusiasm. And right, I want you to do this and you're going to do that. And we need to do a bit more work on the other thing. Isn't that brilliant? Great. Sorted. Moved on to the next item. And a bit later, we break for lunch. And, um, uh, and my HR business partner um, kind of grabbed me in the margins of lunch. I said, can I just talk about, you know, what you did when you came back in the room? And I'm thinking, oh, great, you know, I'm looking forward to this. I was good, wasn't I, you know? <laughs> um, and she said, they had just worked them out. They, they had got there themselves. They were just working out um, how to brief you and, you know, so that you can then go thumbs up, brilliant, you've nailed it. Um, and, I, and I, 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 it crushed me, and, and, and quite rightly. Mm. And... Um, I mean, because what they might as well have done is talk about football or yeah. what they did at the weekend for those 10 minutes that I was out of the room. Yeah. Um, and, and what I did was disempower them when I, when I did that. I showed them, do you know what? I am going to solve the problem. Yeah. Um, not, I, I, I'm, I'm, you know, you're here to help me be more imaginative, mm. not we're here to, to collectively make things, do things. Uh, do things better, and I, you know, I tell that story. I learned a lot from that, that story, um, and about how you how to engage everybody, um, uh, um, and it's difficult. You can get really cynical about it, and it can be, you know, I know what I'm going to do, but I'm just going to wait until you get there, or I'm going to ask questions so you get there. And sometimes the right thing is just, you know, what this is what we need to do. Um, but other times, it, it's I've no idea what we're going to do. Yeah, or I like that. Know, you know what, you're yeah. going to do it better? Yeah. And yeah. actually, wouldn't that, that would have been quite interesting, wouldn't it? Because actually the plan was already forming and it didn't yeah. need you to come in. And, and isn't that just brilliant? Because th there's another example of a different kind of story here. This is, so that's something that went wrong, which you've now learned from, David, and you tell that story so eloquently. Uh, and, you know, the vulnerability of telling that story, firstly, um, you know, it says a lot about character, doesn't it? And we hook into stories where, you know, I, actually, this is something that I tried. It went really badly wrong. I thought I was doing fantastic, got crushed. Um, and because the real story was happening in the room, right? So yeah. the learning here is that there's power in a backstory as well, David, isn't there? Yeah, oh, for know, sure. Really powerful. And that's a story that can be repeated over and over again for different yeah. circumstances of here's how it can go badly wrong so quickly when you think it's all going right and you yeah. didn't check with your team. And and how um so i can be told yeah um uh um you know what's really going on in that story um uh, uh value the expertise in the room 
uh, respect people, give them the time and space, take everyone's contribution, um, uh, weigh it up, make sure everyone has time to speak, challenge, but challenge in a constructive way. So I can be, I can be told all of that. Yeah. And I can, and I can, I can know it, but it's not, um, it's not in, it's the story that internalizes it for me that makes yeah. it, ah, oh, wow, that, yeah, that's what I did. And when I did that, yeah. when I came in and did my brilliant bit of leadership, <laughs> what, what they need, actually what they needed, yeah. um, uh, what I did was destroy all of that. I mean, it didn't destroy it. No, but, no. You know, but you learn from it, right? And over time, I mean, yeah. I did, you know, it's a little bit quiet that afternoon. <laughs> uh, and, um, uh, but over time, yeah. I was able to actually say, you know what, I know that that's what happened. And, and yeah. you know, what's, um, you know, I'm learning from it. And give you can give your team permission to say, look, this is, this is how my brain works. This is, you know, when I start to think, oh, you know, and I'll think aloud and what have you. You have permission to say, hold on, just shut up for a moment, David. That's a brilliant um, lesson, isn't it? And um, you know what? That's stayed with you, that hasn't it, David? You know, no, because yeah, yeah. you know that has been now a foundational part of you moving forward because yeah. you learned from that mistake, right? Yeah. And it's a great thing to share with other people as well, yeah. so that people can remember that story and then not make the same mistake. Yeah. Um, so here's, yeah. I mean, here's another one of these sorts of examples about how different people see different dimensions in a in a story. Yeah. And it's a story. I mean, you've heard me tell this. Um, uh, and to me, it was it's about um, disempowerment and about how a leader, when a leader finds themselves saying, "For goodness' sake, I'll do it myself." Yeah. That, <laughs> how many of us have done that, right? And, and, I, and you yeah. know, of course, everyone has done it. Yeah. So I can tell you that you know, when you find yourself saying, "For goodness' sake, I'll do it myself," mm. um, or oh, yeah, right, I mustn't do that. Um, uh, but this, I'll tell the story, and I think yeah, it's, it's more powerful. But the interesting thing to me when I told the story is that other people saw different things in it. Mm. So again, it's the Falklands War, um, okay. and it is the battle for Darwin and Goose Green. Is it this one um, here? Uh, that's the one. That's the one, um, right? Uh, led by um, uh, that man in the little um, uh, cutout there. Yeah. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel H. Jones um, awarded a posthumous. Um, uh, difficult to say at this time of morning. Uh, possible <laughs> Victoria Cross uh, for this battle. Um, and um, uh, it was the first of the battles on well, after the landing. And it was really important because it um, uh, it was going to secure, protect the right flank of the um, uh, British troops as they marched across the Falklands to Stanley to liberate the islands. Um, uh, and James has come up with a plan, um, and you can see it kind of set out with the arrows on this map. Um, and um, there's an expression in the army about big hands and small maps. Big and hands it's easy to draw these arrows, but, yeah. you know, boy, is that a complicated plan. Right. Um, and, and it was a complicated plan. And one, that was one of his things, that he liked complexity and was attracted to, um, to that sort. But it meant it needed very strong central control. Mm. And the plan was unravelling. They were late. Um, so it was now daylight. Um, the enemy were resisting more formidably than they had thought. Um, and they got to a point uh, on Darwin Hill, which you can see right in the middle of the map, um, uh, where they were held up by a machine gun post. And to me, this is where the, you know, Jones says, I need to see what's going on. One of his um, uh, company commanders, a guy called Don Crossland, who was over on the, um, uh, the left-hand side of this map, right. he can see a way around the problem, a, a way of unlocking the problem. Yeah. Um, and he proposes this over the radio. And Jones says, no, wait, I'm in charge. I'm going to go. <laughs> me, 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 me. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. And, and you can hear him saying, oh, for goodness sake, I'll do it myself. So he goes up and he sees yeah. this machine gun post and sees that that's the problem. And, and I'm absolutely certain he said, right, I've got to, you know, we've got to do this. I'll do this. And he leads a charge and is killed. He died. Um, mm -hmm. and, and we can't, you know, uh, he made mistakes. And to that extent, I am judging him. Um, but, you know, he, he paid the ultimate sacrifice. He was an extraordinary, an extraordinary man. Um, yeah. But he did mistakes. And um, so he will have been saying, for goodness sake, I'll do it. Well, probably a little bit more Anglo-Saxon than that, but <laughs> and he led this charge, and he was and he was killed. Mm -hmm. um, 
and um, and then what what um, uh, well I'll come to the kind of you know the afters um, uh, in a moment. But of course, you know the the commanding officer has been killed. The plan is already stalled. The commanding mm. officer has been killed. It's daylight. We're late. We got a problem here. Mm. Um, uh, and then and then but then what happened was um, Crossland, who has already proposed the way around. The, the second in command, um, uh, uh, Chris Keeble, the second in command takes command of the unit. Right. He can't get forward in time. So he says to Crossland, right, you, 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 you take on. Yeah. What, do you, what help do you need from me? Yeah. And, um, and, it, and kind of empowers the subordinate commanders to unlock. A completely situation. different and approach. They do. Yeah. And they do um, uh, um, uh, un unlock it. Wow. Now, you know, Jones, um, it would have been a very brave decision mm. to say, to Crossland, go ahead and do it. When you know Crossland is less experienced, um, is less senior. What if isn't going to carry the can if it goes wrong? Um, uh, and and so it, it would have been difficult to say, okay, you think you know what to do? Crack on and do it. Um, uh, but but what I so to me that story is about the the danger of saying, for goodness sake, I'll do it myself. myself. And I told that story to a group of people about that. Now. Um, one of our colleagues, Tosh, who might be on the call, he what struck him was that Jones went to, to in this situation, he needed to go and see it for himself. And that's fair enough. But what he wanted to see was where is the problem with my plan? Yeah. Didn't go and see what is the solution that you're proposing? OK. Um, and I think my instinct would have been Jones's. It would have been yeah. to look what's going wrong with my plan. Yeah, I'm responsible. So, so for me, this was about disempowerment and um, don't say, for goodness sake, I'll do it myself. Mm. But other people in so with that exact same story saw um, ego. Um, it, it became, for Jones, perhaps, this was about delivering, this was about achieving his plan rather than achieving their goal um and that by um you know crossland is proposing a different plan which will achieve the goal and indeed ultimately work right so good um, <laughs> that's going to ask that really interesting, yeah. um uh um dynamic and mm. it is big it is you know i could have sat there and said you know the danger of saying um uh i'll do it myself you know you're not doing what you should do you are showing people that that be creating dependency, all of those facts mm -hmm. that we, you know, that we know and that we can believe and, and so on. But by telling the story, it unlocks something else. And I have, you know, I've studied this battle. I've read books. I've, I have stood where H. James died. Right. And, and, and it has never occurred to me that why did he go to look at the problem, not at the solution? Mm -hmm. um, uh, and so I think that's a fascinating, that's, the, that's those different dimensions. Yeah. different people seeing something different, different. And, and being did, able to take a different meaning a, a different meaning yeah so and crossland did he get meddled himself then did he for making that uh, crossland did i think Great. i got a, a military a military cross fantastic okay um, i think if i'm right keeble who became the second in command who was mm. second in command and then took command of the battalion i think he got distinguished service order um, uh, and, you know, there were, um, you know, I mean, people died as a result of decisions. And that is the nature of war, that, yeah. you know, people die. People die. On both yeah. sides. And, mm. um, uh, and it, you know, it's pretty grim. And, you know, we think about what's going on in Afghanistan now, and it's mm. heartbreaking. Oh, tell me um, about it. It's, I mean, oh, I'm, I know, let's not go yeah. down that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's not go down, down that one. I, I, what I wanted um, to say, yeah, yeah. What I wanted to say to you, David, is you talked a little bit earlier about culture and personal values and I think you touched upon you know what's the story that's going on in, in our heads you know you talked about H Jones and his his the thing that was going on in in his head was well I'll just do it my freaking self um, and that's an important thing isn't it you know the story that's going on in our heads you know is that a positive story is it a negative story is it just a story of I have to take responsibility it's the story that's going on in our heads that really shapes what happens to us, yeah. doesn't it? You know, um, finish up that point with us, David. Uh, sort of, you know, we're coming to, towards the end now. You know, um, those stories about ourselves that we tell ourselves and we keep repeating on our heads every day, every moment of every day. You know, as soon as we get up, when we go to work, yeah. all the way until we go to bed. You know, 
So, what's your, what's I mean, your thoughts I, I on that, David? I mean, I've, there's all sorts of stories. That yeah. are going. Well, we, you and I were on a call once, and someone uh, asked, the, the, the speaker asked, um, um, uh, um, who, who talks to themselves, who <laughs> com commentates on their life? Put yeah. your hand up. Yeah. And one guy was a bit slow to put his hand up. And the speaker, um, Nigel, said, uh, um, Charles, of course, is now asking himself, do I talk to myself? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but, um, but we do, we're, you know, we do talk to ourselves. Lovely, and, and beautifully said. For me, there are kind of two narratives going on, mm. um, uh, one of which is um, about um, uh, procrastinating and not being able to do things and not being good enough and, you know, all of um, uh, and it's really important that we shut that down yeah. and that we replace it with the stuff that I know is in fact true that, you know yeah. what, I can, and I'm determined and resilient. And one of the, you know, one of the stories that I, you know, I've told my kids, um, uh, mid nineties. Um, so I will have been, you know, in my, in my twenties and I was in, a, on a, in, in the army and sent to Mississippi, um, uh, for a year and a half to work on construction sites as wow. part of becoming a professional chartered civil engineer. Mm -hmm. um, and um, uh, I, a um, little, little bit of backstory, just before uh, um, deploying, I'd, I'd asked my now wife to marry me. Oh. Um, uh, she turned me down. Um, <laughs> I, and part of the reason was, you're going to America for a year and a half in five days. Uh. Uh, uh, you can't do that to me. Um, uh, so I, I got into my little flat, a little apartment in the beautiful town of Oxford, Oxford Mississippi. Yeah. Um, and was feeling really, I mean, really lonely. Mm -hmm. um, uh, um, uh, I didn't, I knew nobody, literally, I knew nobody in this town. I didn't know what the next year and a half was going to, um, uh, um, uh, you know, unfold. I'd, I, I, you know, I'm a military man. I'm used to that kind of team and cohesion and what have you yeah um and um i i realized you know what if you, you you only only you are getting you out of this situation um no one is going to turn up on my door and say you think you might be lonely come and meet me and my mates um and i i literally when stood in stood in the bathroom washed my face looked in the mirror and you know told myself mm -hmm. uh you need to get downtown um uh and you are not to come back until you have had proper conversations. So not directions, um, uh, not it's the 834 from Waterloo, <laughs> um, uh, um, with four different people. Yeah. And, and, I, and I walked into town and I found a bar um, uh, called the City Groceries. I mean, mm. it's a superb little, tiny little bar in t the town square in Oxford, Mississippi. Um, I got a beer and the baseball was on um, and there's a guy sat to my left and I plucked up the courage, probably a couple of beers in, and said, so what's this game about? Um, and that got a conversation going. He was an English lecturer um, uh, at the university. Some of his mates came in, met them, and that then meant I was there for six months. And, and from that night on, I had a brilliant and really wonderful supportive social life. Wow. Um, uh, and and the you know I mean the backstory Emma eventually relented. Good, and, uh, <laughs> I relented. Just I'll go um, on then. Uh, and, <laughs> Wore her but, down. But uh, you know I do. I mean I've told my kids that story and I tell me that I tell myself that story and it yeah. is about that. Do you know what? Um, when you're feeling shy, you can talk to people, um, and you can make things happen. But more importantly, you know, you've got to get out of the problem. Yeah, um, tell yourself a better uh, story. You know, you've you can you can be resilient and yeah. and um, uh, and there's a little bit. I wonder sometimes whether resilience holds me back in that I can I can put up with some pretty grim situations, and in fact, you know, be determined, intentional, take action. Don't put up with the grim situation. Change it. Yeah, and, and that I know I can do that. Yeah, um, uh, and and I have. Um, you know, I have used that and that has given me the strength in difficult times to to change the situation. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. Um, Andrew Goff um, says this, you know, in our stories, you know, we recently worked on a children's storybook with Exeter uh, Chiefs rugby player uh, Jack Maunder. 
uh, called Bounce Back Jack and all about listening to your inner voice and and try, try again. I love that. I love the pun about try, try again, yeah. by the way. Very clever, yeah, Jack. Yeah, um, very good. Yeah, well done, Andrew. Yeah. And uh, with conversions. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's a converting story, right? And storytelling is the most important thing that we develop to engage and increase life opportunities. Absolutely spot on. Yeah. Um, love Andrew's turn of phrase here. Tanya says this, um, just bring up Tanya's comment here. Lovely stories. Um, I also think that stories uh, we tell ourselves in our own uh, mental dialogue can be positively influenced by learning from history. Uh, simply love history and the lessons learned. Yeah, and we've talked about that with backstories, haven't we? You know, we can learn from the backstories to help influence our own future stories moving forward yeah. and also our own backstories where we where we mess up, right? So, David, thank you so much about that story. Love that story about resilience right at the end. You almost had me in tears there when I was thinking, is Emma going to marry you or not? But, <laughs> but, but we knew what the story, how that story was going to end, right? But so it was like, ooh, yeah. And uh, I love that reframe. Very interesting. So, uh, listen, you know, it sounds like we might need a round two on this at some point, um, David, I'm sure. Um, our audience would, would agree here. So thank you very much for your time this morning yeah, about storytelling. Pleasure. Yeah, just stay on the line for a minute. So uh, look, folks, I hope you found that a useful topic and it's given you food for thought around storytelling, the power of storytelling. There's so much more to this. It's such a deep subject. And I feel that we've really only scratched the surface in looking at, at stories uh, from different angles. Um, so look, if you want a, a free coaching session with David using his intuitive Im approach of resolving issues and looking for solutions through stories, then please contact David. Um, if you're seeking to build a high performing team um, and lead your business, then please contact me for a free a consultation i'd be happy to chat to you and i'll pop all the links for those in the website and lastly also look if you're an sme business owner you know it's funny it lonely at the top and you know let's face it who isn't in these tough times these rapidly changing times particularly post-pandemic world then you know please feel free to contact me about joining our inspired ceos community and david's part of that community um, i'm one of the co-founders of that community as well um you know, david what would you say about inspired ceos just very briefly in the soundbite oh, for us? I, I mean i i find it i mean it's fascinating and again it's that um uh, a diverse group of people mm. with, with you know but with shared you know we've got shared i mean values you know whatever i mean i've said to you this before i, I um uh, I don't go join that group because I think those people in the room are better than me. No. I join that group because they make me better. They make you better. Um, yeah. uh, because they make me see things I hadn't seen and, yeah. and challenge me and hold me to account and, and, you know, love and support me. It's brilliant. Yeah. It's and it's, it, it's like you were talking about earlier as well, isn't it? You know, that actually when you get a group of people in a community that feel safe and they belong with each other, you know, you can start to build those longer stories up together and you work with each other together to find better solutions. And we do a lot of that in the Inspired CEOs room, particularly in our hot yeah. seats, right? So thank you for that, David. That's that's really useful. So um, look, quick, um, I'll just bring up some, some of the comments here just to finish off. Uh, so Andrew said, you know, we can bring and share experience across generations through storytelling. Absolutely. From young to old, right? You know, and that's the beauty of the relationship between your grandparents and kids, for example, you know, that whole storytelling thing. And this is Tanya finishing off here. You know, one of the best experiences I had was going uh, to Rourke's Drift Battlefield, uh, come to South Africa, great experience. Great lessons from Shaka Zulu versus the British soldiers and his bullhorn formations. Mm, there you go. So, uh, yeah, thank you very much, Tanya. That's, that's really useful. So uh, let me just finish up here with a yeah here we go so look listen a quick word about leaders live before i go um and what's happening next week so uh, i set up leaders live really with a purpose to edutain and explore high performance topics via informal fun back and forth type conversation with interesting people just like david today talking about stories you know with a mindset and a passion to help leaders and businesses look succeeding these rapidly changing times we're living through and we, we all are going through those times and I do this because, you know what, I believe that one of the most important factors that this generation of business leaders get success through will be the people factor. And therefore, sort of leaders live, really what it taps into is that kind of innate human superpower of I to the power of we and, you know, and to change all of that. So next week's Leaders Live show, uh, we've got something very different next week, actually. On It's going to be on Wednesday instead of the usual Tuesday, um, but it'll be at the same time, 8.45, Wednesday, 8.45. And we have Kate Young, a specialist and soon-to-be consultant, speech therapist, expert, talking to us about don't take your voice for granted. And she's bringing a 
life size model of our voice box along as well to talk to us about the amazingly complex apparatus which is our voice box and how to look after it and you know particularly with all the online video conferencing we're doing i think this is really important right now so i'm looking forward to that i hope you are too be there or be square folks so you know that's all folks uh goodbye from me and it's a good day from david thank you very much cheers everybody bye thank everybody you again. thanks for listening bye, -bye.